Hey folks, Luke at Nowhere Special. We are hitting up gin again. We're doing the Heyman's line, and I'm gonna start with the Old Tom gin because that's kind of what gin was back in the day. Um, gin was pretty much garbage way back in the day. There was in uh, England, there was the gin craze, which happened in the uh, 17 and 1800s. Um, gin kind of exploded, and there was like absolutely no regulations on it, and gin was pretty gross back in the day. Uh, one of my favorite paintings is, uh, what is it, Beer Street and Gin Alley. You should look it up, it's great. It's it's all about how beer drinkers are fancy and gin drinkers are killing themselves and crumbling and decaying their entire societies. So let's drink some gin. Old Tom Gin is a sweetened gin, essentially. They use some kind of botanical root, whatever, to sweeten it up. Um, so they're not going to be as juniper forward as a London Dry or these new modern day gins that are coming out. And smelling the old Tom versus the London Dry, this is definitely more, you get more citrusy notes. There's not like juniper in your face. It's pretty light. Uh, old Toms are really good for um, kind of like Tom Collins or something like, or Collins. They're, uh, well, they have more citrus in them than a London Dry. It actually, when you put citrus in it, supposedly it balances out a little better. So these are pretty good for mixing your cocktails in. Um, a lot of people use London Dries. It's all your preference anyways. Let's give this a taste. Light citrus notes. Um, there's little juniper in there. It's, it's more citrus heavy than the London Dries are. It's pretty simple. And for a gin, like sipping this, this is pretty sweet, um, which is what an old Tom should be. Um, it's pretty, I mean, it's it's pretty well balanced. And when you mix this, it'll totally tone down your sweetness. There's a lot of honey that comes through this. And then at the very end of it, you get some licorice. Um, this is really good. This will go great in citrusy cocktails because of that sweetness and the citrus notes it should balance out very nicely um might not make the best martini in the world but definitely like a, a good citrusy french 75s collins would be great for that enjoy so as i was saying uh you know old toms also known as bathtub gins uh they were really atrocious back in the day and then as distill and everybody could make them and as distilling progressed they kind of refined their uh, techniques and they wanted a less sweet version of gin. So the London Dry was born. London Dry is, they don't add any sweeteners to the gin um, after distillation. Like any of the sweeteners will be added pre distillation. It'll go run through the distillation process with it. Um, the London Dry is pretty much the modern day gin. Uh, the really popular guys, Beef Eater, Tanqueray, I'm not, Bombay, Bombay, London. Bombay, Bombay is a London dry. Um, so yeah, all your stereotypical gins, London dries. Um, so it's similar, I mean, it's gin. It's very, very similar to the um, Old Tom. But I mean, so you're, with London dries, you're gonna get a lot more of the uh, juniper forward, a lot less sweetness and a lot less citrus in it. It's gonna be very juniper forward and you'll get some licorice roots in there. Um, yeah, let's give it a taste. So whereas the Heyman's Old Tom was a lot sweeter, I mean like very sweet, like you taste a lot of honey. This tastes more like stereotypical gin as you know it. Um, I'm gonna hit that again before I give notes. There's a lot more licorice in it. Um, you get like, instead of like full blown, like lemony sweetness, you get a lot of more zest in it. Um, and a lot of juniper. It's pretty fantastic. If you guys love your stereotypical beef eater tank London dries, you'll love this guy. All right, so now we're moving on to Navy Strength Gin. Uh, Heyman's Navy Strength Gin. Way back in the day, um, the Navy, uh, was a huge buyer of gin and rum and back in the day there was no quality control so uh, you could get some really diluted stuff 
So what the Navy guys would do, the little legend is, is they would proof it. And what they do is they'd put a little gunpowder in it and they'd set it on fire. If it lit up, it was the right proof. If it wasn't, it was too low and they wouldn't buy it. And so that's why you have, the proof is at, I believe it's 57.5. Well, this one just says 57, but I think true Navy strength is 57.5 um, gin. It kind of goes with rum as well. Like nowadays, it's kind of a marketing ploy. Uh, it just means that you're getting a higher proof than what you normally would get. And so what you get out of uh, high proof gin, or at least Heyman's anyways, is it's, uh, in my opinion, it's a lot smoother than the other ones. There's not uh, too much complexities to it. I mean, this nose is just like, all citrusy and junipery. Um, I've made some martinis with this, and uh, the couple was a diehard Hendrix. They're diehard Hendrix fans, and I turned them on to Heyman's, and they absolutely loved it. Um, Royal Dock is my favorite Heyman's there is. And let's give it a taste. So the sweetness is really toned down in this guy. Um, you get a little bit of it. You get some citrus, it's, it's a little hot. Um, and then kind of at the end, you get like a lot of juniper and uh, a little heat. It's, it's really just going down my throat straight. Don't worry, it's, it's really not as bad as it is, but it, it definitely, definitely has a little kick to it. This guy's a lot of fun in cocktails. You can go fancy, you can go simple uh, because it's not overly botanical because the alcohol content is higher. So, I mean, th this guy, like I said, is my favorite. I was very happy when it moved into New York because I found it in Texas originally on a whim. It's great, enjoy. All right, now we're moving on to Heyman Slow Gin. Slow Gin is a gin-based liqueur that um, derives its name from slow berries, which are similar to plums. Um, this guy smells like it's kind of like, I mean, you obviously get a like little hints of gin and it's almost like a lemon or orange rind, like some kind of citrus, like actual rind and cranberry juice. It's also uh, kind of reminds me in my, my sniffings of this, it also kind of reminds me of like a Pinot and cranberry juice had a baby. Um, what you do with this guy is you use it to like uh, kind of like fruity and sweeten up your gin based cocktails, fruity whatever. Um, let's give it a taste. So it's very sour at first, kind of like, I mean, it, it is like a plum, but like to kind of give a more generalized, it is kind of like cranberry juicy. It is syrupy. Um, you get hints of gin. Tangy. I don't want to say sour. It's tangy. Um, and then it kind of delves into like, you get really plum forward flavors at the very end of it. I'm gonna give it a taste again and double check my accuracy there. Lots of tang, almost like drinking a dry red and then it goes into like the sweetness, uh, kind of cranberry juicy plum flavors. It's a lot of fun. Um, slow gin fizz is like the classic. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it just in, in Brighten up your gin, uh, broaden your horizons in gin. It's fun, It's um, and it's not overly sweet at all. It's very, kind of like a dry sweetness. It's really nice, enjoy.